Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. We are back at it, and we're going to have some fun with the Cigar Batch. <laughs> Everyone's doing the Cigar Batch this day and age. But before we dive into that real quick, um, huge shout out to my newest patron, my good friend Mitchell B. So Mitchell, thanks for supporting the Bourbon Judge. Really appreciate the support, the love. Uh, thanks for coming along this journey. And I should give a huge thank you to all my patrons. So thank you for all the love and support. Um, we always have a blast. I mean, we just wrapped up our, our March Madness. Uh, congrats to my good friend Ross, by the way, who won that. Um, and we have a whole bunch of fun, like different contests and so forth. So again, much love and respect. Thank you for all my, all my patrons. So, Cigar Batch, Cigar Blend, Cigar Version. It is like the hot topic, you know, in our whole whiskey community this day and age. It's like one of the hot topics, other than, of course, I was, there's a lot of things, but, you know, like the whole craft distilleries are on the come up. Um, but Cigar Batches and Cigar Blends, are really just like they're they're popping up all over so what do you what does that mean judge so the original the og if you will of cigar batch or cigar blend was joseph magnus which is a uh, straight bourbon whiskey uh finished in armiac sherry and cognac this is obviously coming from joseph magnus you have nancy fraley the uh the master blender there and i mean this was like the original right the og but now just, they're popping up all over. The next one that popped up was Starlight. So Starlight, which I'll get to that one in a little bit. Old Elk has a version. Uh, Good Times, the Good Times brand. That just came, they just came out with a uh, cigar batch blend. Um, and then I know, for example, it's not called Cigar Batch, but we all kind of refer to it as uh, Penelope. They're coming out with the Rio, which is basically bourbon whiskey finished in Ambarana and then also Honeycast. Um, so they're just popping up all over. I mean, hell, I know even one of my patrons, my buddy uh, John Daly, not the golfer, <laughs> but my good friend John Daly, he went to one of his local stores where they did a, uh, a single barrel uh, blend coming from uh, MGP and they finished it like in, you know, obviously like, I think it was like Sherry and Armiac. So kind of trying to, you know, relive the whole, you know, Joseph Magnus kind of uh, experience, if you will. So everyone is popping up with these like cigar batches uh, and so forth. So, you know, the question is, what makes them different? So let's dive into that and then I'm gonna dive into each one of these, kind of give you the high level, uh, my thoughts on them and kind of just rank them as well. All right, so the whole, I guess, cigar batch theory is you're trying to take bourbon whiskey, uh, finish it in something different, typically like a sherry, a cognac, um, an armagnac, and the whole thought process is make it slightly a little bit sweeter so that it can pair very well with or without a cigar. And I will say for all of these, I've sipped them all with and without cigars. So I had the pleasure last night of sipping them with a cigar, and I can kind of tell you my uh, thoughts on them. But I can also tell you right now how they go without a cigar as well. Cool. All right. So let's start with the um, let's start with the new kid on the block. Let's start with this one right here. We're gonna go out. You know, let's go in order. Let's go in order. I, I changed that up. Changed my mind. We're gonna go in order. Let's start with the Starlight. So Starlight. So their cigar batch is bourbon whiskey finished in Brazilian Amberano barrels. And this bottle that I have, this was a single barrel store pick. It was aged four and a half years. I got this one down in Florida. I think it was like an 85, maybe $90 bottle. I forget. It was about $85-ish. Um, but aged four and a half years. And they're just taking bourbon whiskey and finish it in that Brazilian Amberana uh, barrel. Let's get into that one. So what I do like about the Amberano, that Brazilian wood, the Brazilian oak is so rich. It's extremely, if you haven't had a chance to try this or anything finished in a Amberana, you definitely need to at least go to a bar and try it somewhere. So this one I will say, what's the proof on this one too? So this version is 109.8, it's almost 110 proof, almost. It's very deep, very chocolate. It's almost like a, com a combined, like a, like a toasted or roasted chocolate, marshmallow, and like cinnamon kind of combined very much like that like almost like a toasted chocolate marshmallow and almost honestly like a toasted cinnamon it's so deep rich and robust like it's it's just so unique the nose on this is completely different than these two i'm talking completely different they're not even like in the same ballpark like completely different not saying one is better than the other they're just different by by far all right you get all that toasted chocolate, toasted cinnamon, toasted um, marshmallows. Here we go. Cheers, everybody. Woo! 
Wow. That is extremely bold. Not so much like from the proof standpoint, because it's 109.8, but just bold from the flavors that, that come out in the palette. All that like chocolate, the toasted chocolate, toasted um, marshmallow, the toasted cinnamon, all of that is definitely there. It's extremely rich, extremely bold, extremely unique. I will say this is one where I absolutely believe it is better with a cigar than it is neat. Do I like it neat? Sure. But do I like it better with a cigar? Absolutely. I think the rich and boldness pairs very well with a cigar. The only thing I will say about if you're sipping this with a cigar, you may want to go for something on the lighter end, almost like a Connecticut wrapper. And I say that, Connecticut wrapper of a cigar that is, I say that because it's so rich and it's so bold, it may almost kind of not work too well with some of those more powerful uh, cigars that are out there. But like a Connecticut wrapper, something a little bit softer, this one right here will go very well with it. Whew, that is... Uh, <laughs> in a league of his own, let's just say that, literally. All right, I know my man Blake, uh, my buddy, one of my good friends, and a patron as well, he loves, this is like, this is his jam every day and all day. <laughs> all right, Old Elk. So the newest kid on the block creating the cigar blend, Old Elk, um, so obviously Greg Metz, the uh, master distiller, uh, they're still primarily obviously sourcing their whiskey because they're a newer distillery from MGP. But in this case, their cigar cut, they're very straightforward. And I'll, they, I'll, I'll put this up so everyone can see it. But this is essentially, they're taking this straight bourbon whiskey, a high malted uh, bourbon whiskey, age six years, so giving the age as well, age six years, and they're finishing it in a sherry cast for a year and a half, an army eye cast for 1.25 years, Port and cognac each, well, the port cast from three to eight months and the cognac cast from three to six months. So this is very similar to the Joseph Magnus with the exception of the port cast. Joseph Magnus does not use a port cast. Um, they both use a sherry, an armiac, and a cognac. Uh, so that is the key difference. Let's go ahead and, and uh, try this one real quick. Whew, this is exactly like I remember it last night. So... This is very fruit forward. Tons of like different like strawberries, blackberries, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of brown sugar, but definitely like blackberries, strawberries, some plum notes, and almost like an earthy kind of a note to it as well. But the fruit in this bad boy is what just stands out. It pops. All right, here we go. Odell, oh, the price on this bad boy. This one I got um, for a hundred, I think it was like $130, about 130 bucks. Well, my good friends, well, my buddy Terrence uh, was able to find this for me. This is making its way. I will say this one, I, he found it down in Georgia, uh, but I know up in New Jersey, they recently got the Odell cigar cut in. And I'm told from various sources that it's, they're starting to kind of make their way across the US in various states, but not as easily defined as maybe like a Starlight, for example. All right, here we go, folks. Cheers. Oh, man. Literally, that is truly probably a perfect, um, truly copied the nose, copies the palate, and the finish. What's the proof on this, by the way? So this one here, yeah, 110.6 proof. 110.6 proof. Nice long finish but it is extremely fruity even in the palate and the finish it's a very fruit forward cigar cut i will say this is one purely by itself you have to have it with a cigar is it okay neat it's okay neat but it is way better i'm talking like this one's definitely better with a cigar this is way better with a cigar because it's so fruit forward i think this goes well with any type of cigar that you can have, regardless of the type or the wrapper or whatever that might be. This is absolutely fantastic with a cigar. Way better than sipping it neat. All right, real quick, three quick easy favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let me know what are your thoughts on this whole just cigar cut, cigar blend, or cigar batch kind of finish. What's your thoughts on the whole cigar batch uh, approach in the whiskey industry. And last but not least, please make, hit this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notification each and every time I release new content. Cool? Mm. All right. Moving on to the OG. 
the uh, the original. <laughs> Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. Whew, man. Straight bourbon whiskey finish in Armiac, Sherry, and Cognac. So what's unique about this one is, obviously everyone knows Joseph Magnus. We all know uh, uh, Nancy Fraley, the master blender there. She works with a lot of different companies, but this is the one where everyone knows her work and like just loves her product. Um, so MSRP on this one, a little bit more expensive, about 150, 160. However, if you find it, which is definitely hard to find for sure, by far probably the hardest to find of all three of these, it's, you typically find it anywhere from like 200 to even sometimes 250 if you find it. I will say Nancy and the team, they are putting out more Joseph Magnus cigar blends. Like I used to only could find this like once a year. Now I'm almost able to find it maybe like, like three times a year. You just gotta have to know where to look, but it's definitely out there if you do hunt for it, which is cool. They're producing more and it's still not impacting the quality of the whiskey. That I like by itself. So that's pretty cool. Let's get into this nose. Oh man. So one thing I love about what uh, Nancy does over at um, Joseph Magnus, she's using older aged bourbon whiskey and each batch, as it says right here on the right hand corner, this is batch 85. Each batch is always different, but they're typically using older MGP whiskey, anywhere from like 15 to 20 years old. So they're always using really older MGP whiskey. And then of course, it's then finished in the Armiac, Sherry and Cognac. So that's another key difference as well. All right, here we go, friends. Cheers. Oh man. <laughs> that is quite damn good. <laughs> so I'm gonna say everything. A couple of things. Number one, the nose matches the palate. This was a very much of a, a fruit uh, explosion as well. But this one, very oddly enough, it had like caramel, uh, blackberries, and almost like blueberries as well. This one comes in at so uh, 60.97, so it's like almost almost 121 uh, proof, if you will. So this one, nice long finish. This definitely goes well with and without a cigar equally. That is probably the key difference of these three. This is the only one that I feel goes equally as well with and without a cigar. And I do think um, that that older age whiskey that she's using before finishing the, the various different finishes, I think that's kind of helping to balance out the fruit, the fruitiness from the Armiac, the, um, the Armiac, the Sherry, and the Cognac. I think the older age whiskey is kind of helping to kind of ease that out. So of all three, you ask me, Judge, which one's the best? The OG is the best. I mean, it is hands down, and it's the only one that I think is equally as good with and without a cigar. All right, my friends, until the next time, peace, cheers, and most important, salute. Take care.